Say hi, Deb. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so people, I don't know if you can see that, but people will be asking questions on the right-hand side of the screen. Can you, I don't know if you have that on, on your phone, but if not, I will, I will um, say the questions and you can answer the questions. Okay. 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 So, okay. um, so yeah, so uh, anybody who wants to shoot off the first question, go ahead for Deb or for myself or for the both of us and uh, we're good to go. Hi, Deborah. I just finished your book, Diana says. Diana, what did you think of the book? It is a good book, by the way. Everybody, everybody should go out and buy a thousand copies of it because it's very good. Yes. <laughs> Finally, the entire story has been told. And so, um, Deb, let's talk about that a little bit. So why okay. did you want, why did you want to do this book? Oh, so many reasons. Uh, basically I felt that the Bravo series did not accurately tell my story. Right. Number one. And number right. two, I wanted the background behind it of who I am, yep. uh, more details. Yep. along with a little bit uh, I wanted to share about my sister a bit more and then talk about red flags and so on. And coercive control. You you were really, from the beginning, you were really, uh, um, you really wanted to make sure what you, you said that to me. You said, Matt, you know, make sure that we, we, we need to talk about coercive control. And I was 100% supportive of that. I mean, that's, it's, yeah. it's something. It's something as maybe you know, Laura Richards was here in Connecticut, not far from my house, recently. Oh, okay. Getting okay. a law, getting a law passed here. Yes. So, so now yeah. coercive control is part of the the, the domestic violence tree. Right. Uh, in, also in, in California. Oh, great, great, great. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's a very important. Um, uh, it's funny because. As I was telling you, as I've told you, I, you know, I've been I've been on and off the dating apps myself, right? Right, um, right. Not so much for research for the book, but for my own personal, <laughs> my own right, personal. Right, right. And yeah. it's funny because I, I, you know, I, I meet women and coffee, whatever, and talk, and you know, sometimes I'll meet someone and 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 you know, uh, they'll they'll start talking to me, and I'll say, you know, what you're describing about your your ex-boyfriend or your ex-husband is coercive control you you just didn't yeah. know you were being control you know right, so it's right. it's really out there you know um and and as you as you perfectly explained to me uh in the book uh you don't really realize what's going on until you realize what's going on right so talk a little bit oh. about that okay so number one as you well know when the whole story was happening and so on, there was a lot of victim blaming going on. And I'm going, okay, I know I did things wrong. Okay, I ignored red flags, you know, and there's a good reason I went back. But the bottom line is, it wasn't until Laura Richards analyzed it on her podcast and talked about, you guys don't get it. That was coercive control he actually checked off every single box for that he also checked off every single box for um psychopath yeah the psychopath so when checklist. and i yeah. think what that yeah what that did to me at that time is it made me realize wow okay um i was blaming myself you know um for bringing men to my life but it wasn't until she explained it that I had so much relief and clarity that it, it really made a big difference. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to do this when it was approached to me was, A, I didn't watch the series until later, till I got involved. I, I, I didn't pay attention much to it just because of my own busyness, et cetera. But when I started to get into it and started to talk to you, it's, 
I was overwhelmed by the victim shaming and blaming. And yeah, because, it was crazy. Yeah. Because, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you've been married. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter uh, what you've said, uh, how you acted. He victimized you, period. And that became, that became the subject is my marriage is whatever. Bottom line is this guy was a bad, a bad guy. And he, he was a con man. He was, he did everything right. He had mastered it. So as I look back and I learned from other women that had also dated him, they went through what I did, maybe not the same ending, but there were so many women that literally were still either in hiding, changed their names. Terrified of them. Um, and they, yeah, uh, and I was actually, um, I, I consider myself fairly intelligent. Um, and all these women that I talked to were business owners, doctors, I mean, lawyers, you name it, they had fallen for him. Not and people. I realized it, it doesn't have anything to do with the victim as much as it, it's the, it's the guy that, or the girl for that matter, that it, knows I, how to con someone. When I looked through all of the documentation that you guys sent me and I started to go through it, I, I, you know, it was, it was, it was clear to me that, you know, when this guy focused on a target, that was it. Right. You were going to fucking right. destroy your life. You know? Oh yeah. And there was, there was not much you could do about it until it was kind of, you were in it. Right. Um, I, I, just, I, I honestly just, think I was, yeah, go ahead, I was go ahead. a target. I was a target before I even answered him. Right. Right. That's, that's a really good quote. We should have used it in the book. Um, I, I want to say that I'm going to have Laura Richards. Uh, I've already recorded the interview. She's going to be on my weekly podcast, which starts in October. Uh, it's called Cross oh, Line, And I've interviewed her specifically about coercive control mm -hmm. and just because she explains it so well she's so right. articulate she's so smart um mm -hmm. she's been involved you know with psychopaths and 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 domestic violence and all of this for so long um mm -hmm. she often takes hits too as being kind of a man basher but it's 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 not yeah. about that you know it's about no. it's about explaining coercive control and what mm -hmm. happened really you're the textbook case what happened to you you know um that's that's one of the reasons why i think it's it was so important to do this to get the yeah. the, real, the, the the true story the entire story out um mm -hmm. you, you know and, and maybe maybe talk about this so it's funny how when you when i mentioned to people yeah i worked with deborah i, I wrote that that book the uh, uh, you know surviving dirty john about the dirty john Oh, I saw it. Oh my God. And they have, everybody has that, that, that fictionalized version basically of your life. Right. 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 So, so talk about that a little bit. How was that for you once that aired and all of this stuff started coming in? Well, uh, when I looked at the series, I thought that didn't happen. And then I'm going, that didn't happen either. So obviously they put the Hollywood twist on it. Sure. But more importantly, I was getting up to 600 emails, text, whatever, however they could find me a day. Wow. And what it really became was victims. And they said, thank you for speaking out. But I would also get the bashing. Like, how could you be so stupid or whatever? And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm not stupid. I know who I am. Uh, yeah, I did fall for him. Yes. But at the same time, if there's that many women, four women a day are murdered by their significant other. Yeah. That's um, I felt like if I could have a voice for people, uh, I'm going to do it. One, one um, uh, quote that always sticks in my mind that is in the book and that Laura Richards uh, gave me is that with domestic violence it, it's like six to seven times it takes a woman before she actually yeah. leaves the home if she's alive 
Right, right. So she goes back, she moves out, she comes back, she moves out, she, you know, um, and, and that just blew me away. That just blew yeah. me away. And guys like John, well, I know from all of my work, guys like John, they target specific people. They target right. specific people. Right. Um, and all right. So, so let's talk about, um, uh, Okay, here's a question. How about the victimization of Hedda Nussbaum? How on earth did that woman become a victim? That is why what Deborah is doing is so very important because women can be professional and beautiful and yet she can still become a victim of guys like John. So, um, and that's from Diana. So that's true. It, 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 it's like, Deb, talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, you're a professional. You, 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 uh, we outline in the book how you built that business up from nothing to everything. Um, lost right. it, built it back, you know. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you were victimized by uh, a guy who, who, A, is very charming. Right. A pathological mm -hmm. liar, right? Right. And very right. convincing, right? Very convincing. Right. right. Um, very intelligent. Yeah, John, John. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would you, say he's probably pretty close to a genius. Let me, let me ask you so, this, Deb. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. I, never, I never asked you this, and I, and, I, and I have my own thoughts about it. Do you think he murdered his brother? I don't think he did intentionally, but I think that he obviously had a big part of it as far as giving him the drugs. Yes. Yeah. I, I, you know, that whole story behind that, uh, I, I just, mm -hmm. I, I try to wrap my mind around what his intention was there. Um, sending him. I think drugs. he also murdered others. I think there's, uh, unsolved mysteries out there where I really do feel that John murdered other women. I, I think he's a, I think he has murdered women myself. I, I definitely yeah. think so. Yeah. I, 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 I think if, if you did it, if you did an entire cold case study with him as the, as the potential uh, perpetrator and started looking at right. his life of where he's gone, mm -hmm. I think you'll find bodies mm -hmm. in for sure. Right, yeah. Um, um, Okay, and uh, here's a question, um, the court system. So the court system, uh, let's talk about this a little bit because this is, this is important. Uh, a woman uh, wants to file a restraining order, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I just heard this recently from someone actually. Um, you know, you go down and you start and, and, and immediately you're looked at as what? Well, when I filed my restraining order, I couldn't get it uh, because John actually uh, went on camera. He didn't show up. He went on camera and said that he was 100% disabled. And I had a woman judge and she said, well, we're going to we're not going to give you a restraining order. And I mean, we had we had so much proof and she didn't even read it. And yeah. so. For me, it was like I spent ten thousand dollars for nothing, right? Right. Um, to not even get a restraining order, and not only that, but if they break the law already, they're going to break the law with a restraining order, also, if the, if they want to. Yeah, I mean uh, that's another question I think uh, that comes up a lot is okay. Us, what does a restraining order actually mean? Right. It it means right. Okay, you can't come. Uh, a mile, let's say a mile near me, uh, but you do, and I call the police, right. and you're gone. Right. Do they go searching right. for you? No, no, right. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's kind of uh, benign, really, right? A restraining right. order, right. Uh, and and here you are moving from place to place, wearing disguises, 
uh, terrified mm -hmm. for your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Um, I, I just found that uh, absolutely compelling uh, what you went through at that point where, well, you know, I went to four, I went to four police stations and they wouldn't do a thing. Yeah. yeah. And I even said, okay, he's done this. He's done this. He's a bad guy. And they said, there's nothing we can do because you don't have a mark on you. So he hasn't and hurt you yet. Once he hurts you, then we can do yeah. something. Right. And then it's usually too late. Right. Right. He beat you up, put you in the hospital. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If you live, okay, we can do something now. Right. That absolutely yeah. makes no sense. No, it doesn't. You know? um, all right. Here's a question or a comment. How can judges overlook all the terrible things a person has done? Wasn't it 65 pages of documents and he still did not get a restraining order? Then we have to be hurt before we could. Yeah, what we were just talking about. So you, like yeah. you said, I mean, the documentation alone that you had was just incredible. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I mean, the affidavit mm -hmm. that you wrote to go with the restraining order was just detailed right. dates, times, what he did, you know, uh, what you feared for. Um, but it, it, I think the other part that strikes me and maybe talk about this for everyone is that, you know, nobody lives your life, right? No. So you're in this with him and some people around you can't understand uh, what, what you, what, what's happening, uh, let's say. And, and so, but nobody's living in your shoes right? The day to day, no one's living in your shoes. Well, the one thing you have to remember is we're being love bombed. We're being told everything we want to hear. They have studied us. We're, I'm going to work every day, focusing on my work, focusing on what I have to do. He's staying home. He's looking me up on the website. He's, he's doing his homework to know exactly what to, to do and say to make me fall in love with him. So the people aren't seeing what's happening on the inside. They're on the outside uh, judging you. Right, right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, he, he's like, you know, one of the things we mentioned in the book, uh, and I think, I, think the, I think the book, Surviving Dirty John, is a good cautionary tale for anybody who's online dating. Yeah. Because, you know, we talked a little bit about in the beginning about, you know, I, I think I think I wrote in the uh, in the uh, introduction that and I, you know, and I tell women this that I know that are friends of mine. It's like you're on an app and you meet somebody. Get their phone number immediately. Reverse look it up. Yeah. And start looking into their life. If, if you're going to date, right. this person. you have every right to do that. You have every right. right to do that. Don't feel like you're invading someone's privacy. You know, you know, you know, um, you're not, you know, um, and all you need is their phone number and you can reverse look it up and a, you can tell if, if they're using the right name. Right. right. Um, mm -hmm. remember, they can change their name. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember when I first started online dating and, and COVID kind of pushed me into it. So this was last year during COVID. Okay. You know? mm -hmm. And I, I met, you know, I corresponded with somebody and then we met. Right. And mm -hmm. something seemed a little off. And so I, I, I did some uh, checking and mm -hmm. not her name. arrest record right you know, right. You know what I, mean? I and it's like it's like everything that i was told was a lie yeah. <laughs> you know you know so you really have every right to check somebody out i mean it, yeah. it, it it's yeah. to your benefit you know to see oh, what you're yeah. getting into um, um well you know when i did look up john uh there is a doctor named john in orange county John Meehan. So I also got that information, not realizing that it wasn't him. You know, and he was at one time uh, 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 a nurse, right? So yes. 
So uh -huh. he's 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 attached to the medical field in some ways, you know. Right. In yeah. fact, yeah. in fact, there's a scene in the beginning of the book where he meets your daughter for the first time, and right. They know similar. They know they know similar people in the medical field, right? Right. Well, yes, but I'll never know if that was a lie or not because right. John lied about eighty percent of what we talked about. Right. He could have looked your daughter up, found right. out where she worked, yeah, mm -hmm. and just got some of the names off the side of the building, right? And exactly, and, uh, right? Yeah. 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 So, so that's a very good point. That's a very good point. I mean, he was diabolical in that respect. Right. Um, um, so let me see if there's a question. Uh, So this this uh, one woman says she has two very dear friends who had a similar, uh, albeit not so dirty, but still awful situation. Um, um, and uh, I'm not going to say where they were both fleeced. Uh, um, wow. Um, and it's you know, yeah. Um, the other part of this, I think, that's very interesting that nobody that nobody knew before this book came out is is about your childhood and your illness. Um, right. And I think I think that plays a big part in this. So talk about that a little bit about uh, what you went through as a child. I mean, you didn't expect you weren't expected to live long. No. Oh well, I was born without the tube that connects the uh, bladder to the kidneys. So I was extremely sick, most of my childhood. And I remember walking into the doctor's office and he said, you know, she might not survive this uh, surgery. And I was, I don't remember, I think that one was when I was like 11 years old. And I'm not thinking anything of it. Uh, luckily, I'm thinking, oh, huh, well, that's probably not the case. I was probably way too optimistic, which at the time was great because it got me through a lot. But I think that I learned to just sort of depend on myself and trust um, uh, doctors to some degree. And, and I think I was very sheltered, but I was also taught uh, forgiveness over and over and over again because my dad was a youth pastor and a coach and my mom was a music minister and a concert pianist so our life evolved around goodness yeah i mean the nazarene faith so you you know it was all about forgiveness right, right. all right. foundation is forgiveness right that's right yeah redemption, right so right um and I, you said something that really strikes a chord. You were a child and you learned quickly to trust doctors. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here this doctor shows up in your life and you have this built-in trust already with doctors. Doctors saved your life basically, right? So, right, right. So, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff playing in there psychologically, I think, for you. You know, mm -hmm. that that is just... I don't even think we bring that up in the book, do we? No, I don't think yeah. so. It yeah. just dawned on me as you were talking about it, you know. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, and, and of course, the the other part of this is um, is your sister telling her story. Right. Which is just yeah. horrific. And, yeah, it is. And I think one thing that I, that if I, if I struggled with one thing during writing this book for you was that whole, that whole uh, kind of devotion to your parents and yet, right. and yet not understanding um, how they could forgive the person who took away mm -hmm. your sister, right? And, well, and really I think my mom and, 
You know, that was my mom and that's just who, she is one of the sweetest, sweetest women you could ever meet and a really good human being. Uh, my dad was, well, I don't think he felt the same way my mom did, but he loved her so much that he went along with it. But my dad got cancer a year after my sister died. And I real, really felt it was because he hadn't dealt with things. Distressed. And um, yeah, he died in his 60s of cancer. Oh. And, um, but he, he really took it hard. He had a really hard time. And I don't think that he, I think there was a struggle with him forgiving and a struggle with um, being very, very angry at what had happened. So yeah. he just wasn't here to share his story. Right, right. Um, so where is where does that stand today, the uh, ex-brother-in-law? Where, where, where is he today? Uh, the last I heard is he is in um, Orange County, California. He's been married uh, for many years. And the last I heard is he has cancer. So I don't know how, you know, how, how bad it is, but that's all I've heard. Um, the question just popped up and it's a good one. How is your relationship with Christopher Gofford? Uh, he was, he was pivotal in bringing this story forth. And I just want to say that, you know, I think he did a great job. I think, I think. I think, you know, what he did at the time he did it was, you know, um, had he known, I think, about coercive control, he probably he would have yeah. included it, you know. Um, um, so tell me about your relationship with him today and, and you know, what do you, what, what, all of that? Well, I think Chris did what he was supposed to do, which was report and tell the truth. Um, so the LA Times, you know, has the accurate story. And basically, Chris called me after all the victim blaming and after talking to Laura Richards and he said, I am so sorry. He goes, I had no idea. He goes, I really now get it. He goes, but I get it after everything's written and everything's done. And so what he does is we're friends. He's a, he's a nice guy is he'll send me stories even to this day, uh, from people that have said, you know, uh, we love Deborah Newell. She was, she's given us a voice. We're no longer, you know, whatever. He'll give me the great stories that, that he's been sent. You know, it, it's funny because I know this from, all the books I've written and the TV and the podcasting is, you know, as Taylor Swift says, the haters are going to hate, 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 hate. Right. 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 So, so there's really nothing we can do about that. I mean, it, we, we, right. The only thing it we, is what it is. <laughs> the only thing we can do is not pay attention to it because it's really not real. Right. It's, it's really right. not real. Um, right. if, if you really look at it, it's, it's not real. So, um, right. it, it, yeah. Um, you know, that's why I, I really that one of the reasons I was really interested in doing this is because I hadn't been close to the story. So I was perfect. In right. A I was a perfect uh -huh. writer for this because I, I, I had no connection to the story. I didn't see it. I, I wasn't interested in it because I had so much stuff going on. So once I started, I knew about it. Of course, I, I knew I knew the outline of it. Um, um, and, and so I. I think I was perfect to tell the story because I, I, I wasn't influenced by any of that stuff, you know, any right. of that voice, you right. know, um, and, and yeah, I mean, uh, what I, I think a question I have for you is that I never asked you and all the time we've talked is, is that how did this story come about? So, so before the LA times, before the podcast, mm -hmm. I, I mean, right. it's not a known story. How does it, how does it come about? Who's the first one to discover this story? Well, uh, I think somebody read uh, the accident report and what happened to Tara. And they read it in a, I think, I believe a police report, some reporter, some small reporter in Orange County. 
And so she reached out to me. She was, she actually went to school with Tara. And she says, hey, can I give this to Christopher Gofford? I looked up Christopher and saw that he was a great uh, reporter. So I decided, okay, I'll talk to him. Well, we talked and we talked and we talked. And in the meantime, something that's really interesting is I'm thinking it's going to be like on the, a small little article on the sixth page of the LA Times. It was, I believe, every day, full page uh, on the LA Times for seven days in a row. And I, rem I remember I picked up the first magazine or the first, you know, newspaper. My daughter, my oldest daughter, which we don't really bring up a lot, um, which is an incredible human being, by the way, but she uh, wants to be private. Uh, she picked it up and she went, oh my gosh, mom, <laughs> we're on the front page. <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, tomorrow it'll be gone. Don't worry about it. It'll and then the next day, we're the full front page. And she's looking at me, she's going, oh my gosh, we're on it again. And so as a family, we're all like freaking out, thinking, you know, I've got this business to run. I've got, we all have our lives to lead. And one thing that always, I always go back to is one of the reasons I spoke uh, was because if I could help one woman, it was worth it. And I had to just keep reminding myself, this is for others. This is for other women that don't have a voice or are so embarrassed or just need to know what to do, you know, if they ever go through something or, you know, if they're in it, to know that they're not alone. Yeah, I mean, that's so important, right? It's so important yeah, for yeah. people to uh, develop a community who bond on a, on a similar level, you know? And, and, yes. and for a woman to tell her story, come out and tell her story, it kind of, the Me Too thing where it just kind of takes off and other women yeah. can tell their stories. And and I think, um, yeah, that's why I think this was a very important book to, 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 to get out there um, because there's so many people who go through this, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, when I, when I started to do the research for the statistics uh, for online dating, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, you know, something oh, like 38% yeah. or something like that. A, a, a men on the apps are married. Number one. Right. You know? Wow. Uh, yeah. And, and 50% of what a men say on the apps is a lie. And then 50% yeah. of what they say to you when you meet them is a lie. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So it, 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 it became to me just eye popping, you know, what? Right. Right. Because I really didn't have any experience with online dating. I mean, I was married a long time and then I got divorced, et cetera. And I yeah. never went and did the online apps or anything. And, and then I start getting involved in it. And, uh, you know, I'm writing this book and I get involved in it. And I'm like, Jesus, this is just, you know, this is, yeah. you know, it, number one, it's a full time job, you know. Uh, 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 you know, with the texting and, you know, everything. Um, right. Number two, it's just exhausting. It's exhausting. You know? <laughs> I had a couple of guys recently that are online dating. They go, it's addictive. Well. And well, I said, what do you mean it's addictive? They said they have to look at every woman. They have to. And they said, if it's a headshot, you know, that she's, you know, that they're trying to hide something. <laughs> If it's a black and white, it's really old. <laughs> and then I had another girlfriend that told me, she goes, you know, I lie about three things. I said, what? She said, my weight, my age, and how many drinks I've had. <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> so I said, then when you meet the guy, what do you do? She goes, oh, no, that's when I meet him. I, and I was looking at her going, okay. So isn't he counting the drinks? Can't he tell how old you are? <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of lying <laughs> going on. Yeah, I, it's it's amazing, really. It really is amazing yeah. what's going on on those apps. Um, and, right. But you talk about the apps being addictive, and what's interesting about it is I had a conversation with a behavioral scientist guy that I know, and we talked about this. And really, the uh -huh. model, the 
business model for the app is to keep you on it, not to get you off right. of it. Right? right. It's to keep right. you. It's to keep you swiping. Right. Because, because right. then they get your money. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's it's addicting. I I kind of describe it like I for me I describe it like this. I describe and I might get some backlash for this, but uh, I'm going to give it to you. Um, it's like going to the casino. You you go you go you put money in a slot machine. Mm -hmm. You pull the lever. Sometimes sevens. Right. Right. But most right. of the time you lose. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. then you walk out of the casino humiliated and it's like, I'm right. not, I'm not going back, but you know what? The next day you're back. <laughs> okay. You're, you're gambling again. Yeah. Right. So, a lot of people say it's a numbers game. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I you just I, have to keep trying. <laughs> I guess you do. You have to keep trying, yeah. and there there are good people. I mean, certainly I'm, yeah. I'm there, uh, but uh, it's it's just a whole different world, you know. Um, right. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, thank you for giving those women that voice. Maybe they are in a position right. where they can't even talk about it. So thank you. Somebody said. Oh, thank you. Um, even though you are being victim blamed, you are bringing such an important topic forward and you must know that there are many women in denial and the first reaction will be lashing out because they don't want to face and recognize their own abuse. That's, that's, that's interesting. That, that's interesting. that is interesting. Yeah. Um, hmm. Lisa, Lisa wants to know, will there be another series based on this book? Uh, um, so I'll let you answer that. Well, <laughs> uh, it's hard to say. Um, I think this book really reveals a lot and you put the magic on it. You're awesome, by the way. Um, yeah, I loved working with you. You were great. Yeah, it was um, a great experience for me. I do have so many things in the works. Uh, not a book. I have a design book in the works, but as far as um, it's interesting because I have some stuff on TV that we're trying to produce right now, a screenplay, so on and so forth. So, and then we're trying to pass laws. So there is a lot going on after all of this is said and done um, in the book. But yeah, we have, I have this one show that I'm working on and it's, Hopefully it's going to happen. It's, it's a dating rehab, speaking about that. Awesome. And it's really showing the red flags of what dating is, uh, so on. So we'll see where that goes. Excellent. I like it. I love it. As a producer, I love it, Deborah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, working with you was great. I, um, I've, 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 done books, I've done books before with people. And not so great. Um, okay. uh, some of the situations weren't what I expected. Um, but this was very painless. This was very easy to do. Uh, it was you oh, were good. Great. Well, thank you. I'm glad. You were great. You were detailed at answering emails and the just flow, everything. We had a good system going. And it, and it yeah, really we worked. sure did. Yeah, it really worked yeah. well. Um, um, let's see. Your book really pointed out how stupid and archaic the laws are. Um, I hope I hope you drive to change the laws. Uh, yeah, I mean that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah, there's right now it's a little tough with COVID going on. Sure. But uh, yeah, it's really important to to obviously change the system. One state at a time. <laughs> one state at a time. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. you know, and like you said in the beginning, one woman at a time comes forward. Yeah. One woman at a yeah. time. Read your read your book and says, This is happening to me. Right. You know, right. you know, um, because it, it, it's so subtle, coercive control, so subtle. One yeah. one thing that that point that 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 that, that I remember from the book very, very vividly is how the one guy, not John, but somebody else, uh, was moving your car while you were sleeping. 
right? So, so you, 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 you'd wake up and you'd think you parked somewhere, but. Oh, well, right. Yeah. Why is it over here? Well, you know, that's another form of control, right? Right. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, so the guy comes out and says, oh, you're right here. You're, you're over here, you know? So it, it, there's such subtle ways that people control. Uh -huh. other people. Uh -huh. And, yeah. and to, to recognize it, I think, uh, I, I think we, we go into great detail, uh, with Laura, how to recognize yeah. it, which I think is important. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you how Tara's doing, you know, how that is, how she's, you know, going, how she's is today, et cetera. Uh, Tara's an open book, which is wonderful in a lot of ways. Um, she's got PTSD and things trigger it. She just lost cash, the dog in the series, um, at eight years old of a brain tumor. Oh, and that's God. been, Sorry. that has been so heartbreaking. Um, yeah, it, it's been a tough one. It was her child yeah. and saved her life. Yeah. And so she's having a, a more difficult time right now, but I just love her vulnerability and how open she is to some degree. Um, sometimes it's tough because people will judge her. Um, but that's just who she is. Uh, you know, her, her, when I wrote about her, I mean, the courage, I mean, just the will, Yeah. the courage yeah. to, it's mm -hmm. just amazing. I mean, cause we're talking about, we're talking about a tiny little person, you know? Yeah, who, five, five, three. She's actually five, three. Yeah. Uh, a tiny little person who fought this yeah. really right. enormous guy uh, compared to her, right? Um, oh, oh yeah. I mean, just. Wow, you know, um, wow. Um, um, and I think we have a few minutes left here. Um, I think I want to talk a little by bit the about, way, go ahead. By the way, Tara really wants to write a book. Are you, would you be interested? <laughs> would I be interested in writing a book? Yeah. I would be interested in writing a book with her uh, about, not about this, but about PTSD and yeah, survival. yeah. She's really studying all of that. Yeah, right now it's amazing. Um, I think that's her story. I think that's yeah. her story. I think her story is her life, not this. Yeah, this yeah. is part of it, but this is a very small part of I think right. a life because you know I I learned obviously a lot about her that's not in the book, right? So right, um, right. I think she has a very compelling story to tell that can help people. I, I really do. Yes, I 100% agree. Yeah. I really do. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be interested. I'd be interested in talking to okay. her. Okay. I'll yeah. let her know. I'll let her know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think closing this out, someone said, I am, I am interested to, in Tara's book. I follow her on Instagram and she is just amazing. Oh, someone else said, that. I would be also interested in Liz's, Liz's story. So Liz is well, your other. <laughs> uh, yeah. Liz has her own major story. <laughs> <laughs> Quote Liz. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> she she's a character and a half. <laughs> yeah, she, she's actually much sweeter than her character on TV, but she has a she is too smart for her own good. <laughs> she can write it under a pseudonym, you know. She can write it under a a, a, a fictitious oh, name. Oh, she would have she would have an incredible book. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I would, uh, you know, what the little I know about her story, I think so. I can agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm going to just put it out there for any last questions anybody has. Um, and people are saying thank you for sharing your time, etc. Um, oh, 
And I, I just, while we're waiting for maybe a last question or two, I, I, I was just wondering about um, uh, you with John at the end, you and John at the end. Talk, oh, talk John and I at the end? Talk, talk Sorry, a little I'm, bit about I'm my that. batteries. Uh, well, I was in hiding for seven months, as you well know. I mean, uh, I mean, so I mean, obviously. I mean, the very end, the very end, the very end. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I think one of my biggest issues is <laughs> it's a strength and a weakness is I don't like people to die alone. And I am also a very forgiving soul. And so obviously, uh, when we pulled the plug on him, which I let his, his sister make that decision, I was in the room. And uh, watched him die. Um, and how did you feel in that moment? I mean, deep down inside, how did you oh, feel? Oh, gosh. You go through every emotion. I went through, I was, you know, I was in shock during that time frame. Um, definitely I, yeah, I, I was 100% in shock for at least six months. You definitely were. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I think for a good, well, six months in, in shock and for a year, I was probably just questioning what was the truth and what was a lie. And then I wanted to study everything, you know, about psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissist, um, love bombing, um, gaslighting. I really wanted to educate myself and understand. And so I spent a lot of time doing that, but yeah, every, you have every emotion. You're, you're, you're so angry. I've never had hate in me and I don't know why, but I don't feel hate. Um, I felt sadness. I felt lots of pain. I felt like, why, you know, um, I felt stupid. I have to say, I thought, you know, how could I go through this? How, how could I put my family through this? But you are the victim. You know, and you have to realize you walked in with a pure heart wanting love. You know, you didn't walk in trying to do something wrong and they were love bombing you. So you, you fell for it, you know, and anyway, if I, am I ever going to do that again? Absolutely not. Am I going to, I think the last guy I dated, I said, don't read the story don't i don't want you to be involved in anything i want to get to know you organically and and i want you to get to know me organically and we've had a great you know i'm not dating him now but we had a year and a half of a good relationship so you i think it's important else? uh not really i mean yes and no i'm dating uh but I haven't really met anyone that I'm head over heels in love with. So it's a little scary. I can imagine. I can yeah. imagine. You know, we, we all we all bring stuff into a relationship, right? We all bring baggage yeah. Yeah. into a relationship. Right. And it's hard enough, you know. Um, it's hard enough on its own, but, you know, you add in the, the part where, you know, a person like John steps into your life, it's a whole different thing, you know, and. Oh, and yeah. I, and I think I want to say lastly uh, about uh, a guy like John, in my experience as, as writing about people like him my entire career, that, you know, when a guy, when a guy becomes obsessed with somebody, all right, um, and in this case, he was not only obsessed with you, but he was obsessed with your kids and 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 control yeah. he, could, he couldn't mm -hmm. control your kids right so his obsession was to try to control them knowing he could right 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 so so it's not surprising to me as a guy who, who writes about this these types of people that he goes after your daughter it's not surprising at all right i mean see he, i i didn't see that nor did the um forensic psychologist right Right. So, and I was taking, obviously, they're the expert. I was taking their, you know, what they wanted me to do. Um, so, obviously, they can't go after your children. I mean, 
look, a guy, uh, this is the, the old Oprah saying, a guy shows you who he is, you believe him, right? So, right. so uh, 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 a guy like, a guy who becomes obsessed with somebody, uh, right. a woman, um, is right. going to, generally speaking, uh, n not hurt her, but he may hurt the people around her who he feels are stopping him from mm -hmm. getting her. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right? you had this core right. circle around you that's kind of telling you this guy's bad, this guy's bad, this guy. And he knew that. Right. And he knew that. Right. So if mm -hmm. I take them out, I got her mm -hmm. again. Right. 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 So, mm -hmm. so yeah, um, cautionary tale in that respect. Um, yeah. But uh, so, yeah, so we're almost to the end here. And um, so, any last words you want to say to everyone, uh, Deborah? Um, well, if you want to know the truth and want to know all the details, the background and also red flags, etc., uh, buy the book. <laughs> yeah, buy, you know, Surviving Dirty John, Deborah Newell's story, um, my true story of love, lies, and murder. Um, um, yeah, I, I'm just very grateful and uh, fortunate to be a part of it. Uh, that that we connected on this, uh, I really, wow. I really found it to be a, a learning experience as well as uh, I was just grateful to be able to tell your story, your your complete story uh, in your. Oh, words. thank you. It was my pleasure, actually. No, nobody else's thank words. You. This 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 is your this is this is your time, you know. Oh uh, well, thank uh, you. Yeah, everybody else has had their take on it, and here's this is this is the from you, which I like, um, but Thanks. listen, um, it was good to see you. You too. And Keep in contact. I, I definitely will. I, I talk to Danielle every once in a while, your assistant. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, yeah, we, we speak every once in a while. Um, okay. Email. Um, and thank you to everybody who tuned in or streamed or whatever you want to call it and buy the book. Um, and, uh, we hope to see you all soon. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, Dad. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. You too. Safe travels. <laughs> thank you. You too. <laughs>